Hi everyone, welcome to another video on experimentation with me. Okay. So uh, in this video, I will demonstrate to you how a capacitor, a discrete component capacitor, can actually behave as a series RLC circuit, especially in high frequencies. So uh, it's at a first glance, it seems like uh, this video will teach about RC circuits, right? Well, RC circuits are basic circuits that you have already learned in your basic electronics. But if you have an actual resistor and capacitor and you want to use it in high frequencies, you will see some magic that happens in high frequencies. Okay, So what happens is if you increase the frequency to a high frequency, your capacitor won't be shorted as what is happening in theory. So like what you see on the screen. So the uh, behavior that, that uh, we want this RC circuit to behave in terms of its body plot is, uh, let's say, uh, something like this. Okay? So we have some cutoff point. Okay? And from there, the magnitude of the voltage at the output of the capacitor will just... Uh, go down monotonically. What actually happens is this. So from this circuit, your your magnitude will actually drop down to a certain minimum, and then go up again. Okay, and then saturate at some point to the same output here as V S. So this point here is what we call the self-resonant frequency of your capacitor. And this is actually how a capacitor behaves in high frequencies. But still, this is just a very simple model of it. Okay? So you model the capacitor as a series RLC as another form of approximation. In reality, it's actually uh, more complicated than that. But uh, for, uh, for the frequencies around the self-resonant frequency, you can model the capacitor as a series RLC circuit. And you will get this response when you uh, plug in your capacitor in your uh, circuit and use it in high frequencies. Okay, So uh, this self-resonant frequency corresponds to a minimum okay, magnitude of your transfer function from Vs to your output here. Okay, From here, at this minimum, your uh, your capacitor and its effective inductance will actually be shorted, Oops. leaving you with just a resistor. Okay, and this minimum, from this minimum, we can actually calculate the resistance. Okay, and from there we can also calculate once we determine what FR is, we can also calculate the effective inductance. How? Well, the minimum resistance. So if you have your the magnitude minimum, it's approximately equal to your uh, series resistance of your capacitor divided by RS, which is the resistor that we set here, plus R times, uh, no, no, no times. So this is the uh, formula for that. Just solve for R at this point, okay? So your minimal uh, value for your transfer function and to solve for the effective inductance, uh, you just need to, oh, sorry, you just need to compute first the uh, the uh, impedance or the reactance of the capacitor, okay, at resonance. So this should be omega sub r, which is equal to one over two pi f r times c. Okay, and you equate that. To 2 pi fr times the inductance. And can, from here, you can solve the inductance actually, which is equal to 1 over 2 pi fr squared times your capacitance. Sorry, let me just fix that. There you go. So let's see if this model will work in actual experimentation. Okay? Okay. So this is now our simple RC circuit. Okay, 
connected to or powered rather by a signal generator okay and uh, two channels are connected to the oscilloscope display to the oscilloscope here the yellow line is the input and the blue line is the output so you won't see a difference here right now because the signal generator is operating at 10 Hertz so it's a very low frequency and such that the capacitor will look like an open circuit and it, uh, it will absorb most of the voltage that is being uh, fed into the circuit okay so as we increase the frequency as per our theory the voltage across the capacitor should go down and that's our uh, output right now okay so let's see at around 100 Hertz okay we see a de certainly we see a decrease in voltage here okay so as we increase more okay around 300 Hertz as you can see the voltage uh, dies down in the capacitor the blue the blue line dies down quickly okay at around 1 kilohertz you will see that it's the voltage is already less than half the voltage of that in their sister I will show you the numerical results later so just for now let's see how it will behave as we increase the frequency so in theory as we increase the frequency more and more okay, the theory is that this blue line will become very short and very flat okay it will become zero at infinite frequency so let's do just that let's bump this up to 100 kilohertz the frequency and see oops and see if we have we still have uh, some voltage across the capacitor so let's see okay as you can see right here there is no more voltage across the capacitor so it's very small maybe you can try to zoom in maybe you will still see some yeah there's still some voltage very small okay it's right there you can see a uh, small sinusoid let me zoom in there you go okay so uh, we know that this is still a capacitor because the phase shift between the two peaks is uh, or as you can see that the yellow uh, sinusoid is still leading the blue sinusoid right so or the blue sinusoid is lagging the yellow sinusoid as the behavior that we saw earlier okay okay so uh, we'll continue increasing the frequency from here and see how it will behave so right now I am at 1 megahertz and as we can see the capacitor is still decreasing okay let's increase the frequency more okay. zoom in okay as you can see between 4 and 5 4 and 5 and 6 the voltage across the capacitor is increasing again so what is happening I already explained this earlier but what is happening here is that uh, the capacitor is now behaving more of like an inductor okay so as we increase the frequency input here in this circuit the capacitor will decrease its output voltage but at some point after its self resonance the, the amplitude or the output across the capacitor will increase in amplitude again okay so as we further increase the voltage there we go we see an upwards trend in the output voltage of the capacitor and this is the maximum oh sorry this is at 20 megahertz okay the maximum of the signal generator is 25 so let's see okay there you go okay so this is the voltage across the capacitor it's already large enough okay and as you can see it's behaving more of an inductor instead of a capacitor as seen in the uh, la uh, leading voltage here the, the voltage across the capacitor instead of lagging the input it's now leading the input as you can see here 
Okay? So we, we, can, we can observe that better if we uh, have a higher frequency, but this is the limit of our equipment. But uh, as you can see, uh, the capacitor is not really just a capacitor in this case. But instead, we can model it as a resonance circuit. So at this point, we, could, we should ask, what type of resonance circuit is it? So it occurs, it, has, it, it looks like it has a minimum resistance somewhere at 1 MHz. So let's go back. Okay. So somewhere non at no sorry somewhere be with be between one to six megahertz. So it has a minimum voltage there. So somewhere between three to four megahertz. Okay, it has a minimum voltage. So that means that since it has a minimum voltage, it's kind of like a short circuit. So if it's a short circuit, then that means the capacitor and its inductor cancelled out forming a short circuit therefore the capacitor uh, would be acting as a series resonance circuit first order series resonance circuit in this case so let's see the results numerically so now here we have tabulated the magnitude uh, and phase of the experiment that I've shown you earlier okay to remove the effect of the source, I, uh, you can see a trend in the input that also goes down and goes up with frequency. Okay? So you can see here that the uh, input magnitude also changes. So uh, since we measured the input uh, from the basically the alligator clips at the output of your signal generator, you're discounting the effect of the signal generator to your circuit so we get a good approximation and as uh, the frequency is measured by decade every decade you get 10 uh, frequency points okay and uh, from there we can calculate the magnitude by dividing these two and the phase is measured in the oscilloscope okay so convert this magnitude to db and we plot the db over frequency in a semi logarithmic plot you get this plot right here. And as you can see, uh, at below the uh, around 100 kilohertz, you get a monotonically decreasing function here, which is what we want for the behavior of a simple RC circuit. But at some point, you'll, you'll hit a minima, and then your, uh, your, your graph starts to rise again, indicating that you have an inductor here since it's already increasing. At some point, it will saturate and you will get uh, an open circuit again, which is how a series RLC circuit behaves. At high frequencies, it's also an open circuit. Okay? So at the minimum, we have at around, uh, sorry, we have negative 62 dB, which corresponds to this point right here at 900 kilohertz. So I actually stand corrected. I thought the minimum was around, uh, the minimum was around 1 to 6 megahertz. Uh, but I did not take into account how the, the source changes as I increase the frequency, okay? So anyway, we have uh, the minimum occurs at the point nine, uh, 900 kilohertz, okay? You have a magnitude of around 0 0.8 milli or 8 times 10 to the minus 4. From there, we can actually calculate the series resistance, okay? It's around 7.7 .7 ohms. And uh, since the resonance around 900 kilohertz, let's assume it's around 900, it's definitely not exactly at 900, but the, the, the data that we have right here, well, let's just say that it's around 900, okay? And uh, we get uh, the reactance at resonance, 3.5 ohms. From there, we can compute the effective inductance of your capacitor, which is kind of weird, right? Capacitor has an inductance, but that's how the practical real-world capacitor works. It's, it comes from the parasitics of the capacitor, not necessarily the capacitor itself. It could also be the parasitics due to the uh, wires of the capacitor and so on and so forth. So it's around 625 nano Henry. Okay? And we can now model the circuit. So let's use this. Okay? Just move. Okay, there we go 
And so we, we have this circuit right here. We have this uh, effective resistance of the capacitor. It's capacitance. We assume it to be 50 nanofarad, but uh, that's the rate. That's uh, what the capacitance is actually what I use. But uh, it's not exactly 50 because there's a 20% tolerance here. So uh, we can just yeah, let's 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 trust the manufacturer here in this model. Okay, so it's, let's assume it's 50 nanofarads and uh, you get 625.44 nanohenry as your effective inductance. So uh, if we if we run this uh, circuit simulation, uh, let's get the voltage output here. You get the same behavior as what we saw earlier. Okay, if we tabulate the uh, magnitude of that in dB actually get this and if we want to compare the plot of that to what the data that we have let's see if the theory that I use is actually accurate okay so the, uh, we just need to add uh, another series here so select range and that is from the data from H1 to H57 okay and this is the data as you can see okay and uh as you can see that the the model that we used uh, as actually accurate to a certain point okay uh what happens here in the the, the discrepancy here is uh, from other parasitic effects that we did not take into account okay the bottom line here is that you don't you can't really trust a discrete component in high frequencies okay if you want to use a component at a certain frequency, you have to check its data sheet and uh, operate at around two decades below the resonant frequency. So you operate it right here. You get uh, almost accurate value of that component. So that ends this video. I hope you uh, learned something from this video. And uh, maybe for my next video, we'll have an experiment on amplitude modulation and how to receive an amplitude modulation so nothing set in stone yet maybe you can also request just leave a comment in the comment section below okay so that's it okay so it's interesting right how this capacitor is actually a series resonant circuit okay uh, i don't have an inductor so i can show you but an inductor behaves as a parallel resonant circuit opposite the capacitor Anyway, I'm rambling on and on here. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope to see you next video. Bye.